League Ready TV is proud to present coverage of the Western Maryland Classic here on the campus of Garrett College. We're in Deep Creek, which is the western panhandle of Maryland, where it seems to snow about 360 days a year. It's Luke Wiggs and Daniel Woods with you courtside for a game that needs no buildup. Daniel, no superfluous adjectives. It's two top 25 teams in the Sports Center next top 25, and the number 10 ranked Bishop O'Connell Knights and number 14th ranked Brewster Academy Bobcats. You can already kind of feel the energy building in the gymnasium here, and we're going to see a high level of basketball this afternoon. These are two programs that you can count on year in and year out to be among the best in the nation to have some of the best players in the nation taking the court and it's going to be a pleasure to see these two teams square off here at Garrett College and you may not expect to see two of the 15 best high school basketball teams in the nation playing at Garrett College here in Deep Creek but it's something that we are certainly happy to see here, the Western Maryland Classic shaping up to be a tremendous event over the next three days. We'll meet the starters here in just a couple of moments, but it's not just a matchup of two high-profile teams and the players that we're going to see on the hardwood. It's two coaches that have very significant pedigrees for Joe Wooten of Bishop O'Connell. This is his 25th season. He's won 68% of his games at the helm of the Knights. On the other side for Brewster, Jason Smith in his 24th season, an even better winning percentage, 81%. These are two coaches that don't lose games often. One of them's going to have to lose today. And it's, it's easy to say with programs like this, oh, well, the talent gets them by. But you have to think these are two coaches that have been at these programs for over 20 years. They're the ones that are producing that talent. They're the ones that are bringing these guys in. And when elite talent meets elite talent, Coaching makes a difference. Certainly. The starters for Brewster Academy, they're going to be wearing the navy blue tops and bottoms and white numerals. Elijah Crawford gets the start. He's the four-star Stanford commit. He's wearing number one. He's going to be joined by Noyes Andrew Sadis, uh, the Lithuanian native, along with Sebastian Wilkins wearing number 11 today. DJ Shine, who's committed to Murray State, he's wearing the number 12. And the big man in the middle is the man who signed a letter of intent to Purdue, Daniel Jacobson, the six-foot senior with a wingspan north of, I make it seven foot, but forgive me, don't want to short him a foot there. That wingspan north of seven feet tall, Daniel, he's going to be an impressive man in the middle. And he's somebody that's going to be difficult to deal with for this Bishop O'Connell lineup that at the five goes with Wyatt Norton, who at 6'8", not undersized, but against seven foot two Daniel Jacobson, it's a mismatch. The tip up, and to none surprise, it's one back by Jacobson to Elijah Crawford, who brings the ball across the timeline. We're underway for this top 15 high school basketball matchup on the perimeter. This is Sebastian Wilkins. They work it around the perimeter again to Andrew Sidis, the Lithuanian native. Now driving is Shine, the Murray State commit, and the ball quickly knocked away, recovered by Brewster. Corner three is up and rattles in and out off the hands of Shine, and a rebound for Bishop O'Connell. The break the other way is stunted in transition by the Bobcats, and they win possession back with the ball in the corner. This is Elijah Crawford, again a four-star Stanford commit, putting the offense in motion. Now to Wilkins on the perimeter. Back up top to the big man, Jacobson. An off-ball screen to set up Shine. Fires again from three and misses the mark. Outlet pass down the floor. Quickly ahead to Tucker. He's able to finish through the contact for the first two points of the game. We didn't get the chance to introduce you to the Bishop O'Connell starters, but the man you're going to be most intrigued to watch today is Bryson Tucker. There is a finalist for the Naismith Trophy. He's a five-star, the number 20 weight ranked player in this class. And, Daniel, you saw why there. Impressive job from Tucker getting out in transition. They were looking to get him leaking out on that first possession, just a bad outlet pass, and then he finishes through the contact, not able to knock down the free throw. But it, it's a abundantly clear quickly and really abundantly clear in warm-ups just how talented he is. The Brewster starters, as we mentioned, uh, Elijah Crawford, Noyes Andrusinus, you see him now on the screen, Sebastian Wilkins, DJ Shine, and Daniel Jacobson. There's a miscue there on the ball on the rebound by Bishop, or rather make it Brewster Academy, so it's Bishop O'Connell's ball. There's a right wing three set up by A.J. Swinton, no good, and a contested rebound leads to a foul. The starters for Bishop O'Connell, A.J. Swinton, you just heard there, the senior, six foot six, the number six recruit in the state of Virginia is a four star. He's going to play his collegiate ball at Florida State. He'll be joined by Tim Walker, the junior, Bryson Tucker, who's made his impact early on in this game, Wyatt Norton and Aiden Kolker. Possession now for Brewster Academy. Running the point, D.J. Shine. Played at Augusta Christian School last year. Scored 1,000 points over his career with them, averaging over 20 a game last season. Andrew Sadis rises for the mid-range jumper, and he got it to go. And that's the kind of shot maker you get with Andrew Sadis, and the kind of guy 
that T.J. Otzelberger is going to love to be getting at Iowa State. You've seen so many guys like that that can create their own shot, particularly in the mid-range, go into that program, and Indrasadis is no different. Here's Walker up top to Swinton. Waiting for something to develop away from the ball. Indrasaitis comes away with that entry pass. Runs the break the other way in transition. Will lay it off to Jacobson. He spins and puts up the hook and gets it to go. And Jacobson really, as we've seen in warm-ups and just there, is so much more than just a seven-footer. Tucker looking for a quick answer. Fishing baseline underneath the rim, nowhere to go. As they work it around the perimeter, block shot. It's taken away by Crawford as he rejects Walker. Back the other way comes Brewster, driving baseline, reverse layup up and in by Sebastian Wilkins. Now we're playing some end-to-end -end basketball. Pass into the front court. Norton answers quickly on the other end. Wyatt Norton, a little undersized in this matchup, like you mentioned, six foot eight, but he runs the floor well. And that's what you have to ask for, particularly against a seven-footer like Jacobson. You want his matchup to get out, run the floor, beat the big man to the basket, and get an easy bucket just like that. Andrew Sadis gives it into the corner. Shine again can't find the mark from three. It's rebounded by Norton. Bryson Tucker, the six-foot-seven senior, instigates the offense for the Knights. If you're Brewster there. Three-quarter court pressure now applied by Bishop O'Connor. Andrusaitis looking to get around it. Andrusaitis free throw line through the contact, elevates and scores. He's up to four points. Just such great touch from Andrusaitis in the mid range. The second time we've seen him get to his spot, and it's just straight up and down. Great body control as he's able to knock it down. And again, just really clean release up at the top. Here's Asari. Bishop O'Connell with it. And it's kicked out of bounds on a miscommunication there by Tucker and Swinton. Andrusaitis, like you mentioned, the Iowa State commit. And their coach, Ochelberger, talked about his versatility. Six foot four, can play and guard multiple positions on the floor. And as you saw there, can score through a tremendous amount of contact. This is Jeremiah Jenkins. Back to Indrasadis. Is able to force the circus shot up and through. He's up to six points. Brewster looking to extend their lead. They're up by six. Just under 100 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Here's Tucker, double team, passing up top to Asari. He fires from three, it's no good. Those are opportunities that Bishop O'Connell is going to have to take advantage of. So much focus put on Tucker. Here's Crawford running the floor, trying to go coast to coast, and came up empty with a long jumper. Rebounded by Harris. Jaden Harris, the senior, coming into the game. Asari to the trailing Norton. Gets it down low to Tucker. Tucker hesitates, scores, and counts the basket. Bryce and Tucker up to seven points with a chance to convert the three-point play here at the line. And so many different things go into making him one of the top players in his class. Daniels, a three-level scorer, great body control, as we can see here early on, is his ability to have patience underneath the rim and finish through the contact. Absolutely right. And the biggest thing that sticks out with Tucker is he's always got his feet underneath him. He's always, like you said, got great body control, but he's always under control. He's never playing too fast for his own skill set to catch up and doesn't get the free throw to go there uh, but we've seen with some of those tougher pull-up jumpers that control is what allows him to get those shots off cleanly this is Jeremiah Jenkins a senior from New Britain Connecticut re-established the offense a four-star prospect going to Brown new faces all around for this team up, up, up. Jenkins there nearly turning it over. Here's a force banked in straight away. 15-footer by Sebastian Wilkins. He's up to five. Brewster leading by six. Shane Lincoln into the contest. Oh. Dishes underneath. The ball poked free out of the hands of Norton. And it's recovered by Bishop O'Connell. Dishing underneath to Tucker again draws the contact. He can't make the shot this time. But he's fouled from behind by Sebastian Wilkins. That's two early fouls for the Brewster Academy player. This is a Brewster team a little shorthanded today, Daniel. They're playing with just nine players. So foul trouble is certainly something to keep an eye on as this game progresses. Uh, you're right, and again, we've seen Bishop O'Connell now as they've settled into this first quarter, continuously go into the paint over and over and over. We talked about the mismatch of either Jacobson or Kurak against Norton at 6-8. In a lot of cases, this Brewster team's been running Indrasadis at the three, his matchup being Tucker. Tucker, three inches taller than him at six foot seven. Indrasadis on your roster at six foot four. 
Uh, so they've created some mismatches on the inside themselves, and that is something that could very clearly lead to foul trouble for Brewster. Tucker has eight of O'Connell's 10 points, but he's lost a couple at the line. He's matched up right now with Indrasadis. This could be the final shot of the first quarter. Indrasadis driving down the lane, fades away from 15. Great touch again as Indrasadis, that's his fourth field goal. Just a couple of seconds remaining, Lincoln runs the floor. Lincoln going all the way to the rim to beat the buzzer. They say the shot won't count. He let it go just a half second too late. So 17 to 10 will be our score at the end of the first quarter. And Daniel, some of your early takeaways, we expected a lot of Noyes Indrasadis and Bryce and Tucker on both ends of the floor, but it's the tertiary pieces from Brewster that have given them this seven point advantage. Yeah, it's Sebastian Wilkins that's made the biggest impact when it comes to the margin in this game, I would say. An early five points for him. Again, gonna have to watch the foul trouble as he picked up two early ones. But I, I said it earlier, it's about the motor with him, and that's what has created these opportunities. He got a bucket in transition, he got fouled in transition, knocked down one of the free throws, and then showed a little bit of an ability to hit a jumper from the free throw line. So Wilkins, in my opinion, the difference so far. Uh, but one thing that stands out with Indrasadis is you get late in the shot clock with this Brewster team. Uh, you're in a position where you have to scramble, get a shot away. He has the ability to get into the lane, get into that 15-foot range, consistently get to his spot, and knock it down. And we've seen that a couple of times where it looks like there's a possession for Brewster where there's nothing doing, and then Indrasadis just gets to the elbow and knocks it down. And that's been the biggest thing uh, between Wilkins adding that second scoring punch and Indrasadis being a consistent option late in the shot clock that's been the difference through eight minutes. Jason Smith directing his troops on that Brewster sideline, as we mentioned, his 24th season. Possesses a record of 614 wins to just 140 defeats. And this is a Brewster team that scores just about 63 points per game in the Nike EYBL circuit. But, you know, the thing that stands out the most, Daniel, is this Brewster team is dead last amongst the 14 EYBL teams and three-pointers attempted. Now there's a pretty good reason for that. <laughs> exactly. You go 7-2 and 6-11. Uh, at the center position, and then you have a guy like Indra Sadis, who we saw in warm-ups, has the ability to shoot the three ball at a high clip, but he thrives in the mid-range. So your your best offensive options are not necessarily guys that are going to need a bunch of threes to put points on the board. It's Bishop O'Connell basketball to begin the second quarter. Nice find underneath, but the freshman can't finish. A sorry, that's Hahn to come up with the offensive rebound. Steve Hahn, who's checked into the game, but it's ripped away by Indrasadis. He's got one man to beat. Instead, he'll slow it up in transition. Now he wants to elevate for the jumper and can't get it to go. Not the friendliest rim for him early here at Garrett College. Attacking in transition. This is Lincoln cut off. Good defense there by Jenkins. Bishop O'Connell will recycle. Harris looking to penetrate. And back up top to the freshman Asari. They work it to Tucker in the corner. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Spins away and fades. A tough shot up and in. Was able to finish at Indrasadis and say, anything you can do, I can do better. And again, that size difference sets that up for Tucker. He posts him up is able to catch the ball in deep, and then that extra length that he's got on Indrasadis is able to extend over the top to get the jumper off. Jenkins looking to spin free, finds a wide open shooter. Shine misfires again. The rebound pulled down inside for a moment by Pugh, but it's taken away by Bishop O'Connell. They trail by five, and of their 12, as I mentioned, Bryson Tucker has 10 of them. He sets the screen trying to free up the freshman Asari. Back up top to Harris. Harris spinning around, looking for space. Dishes inside, reverse layup. No, Lincoln has it knocked out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Knights. Harris just kind of running out of options there as it was knocked out of bounds. Good defense at the rim by Kirouac. Inbound for Bishop O'Connell. Lincoln struggling to get it in. He launches it back to midcourt. A dangerous ball that's picked up by Harris. And the defensive pressure from Elijah Crawford has been unrelenting any time he's been on the floor for this Brewster team. Here's Lincoln to beat the buzzer. A tough shot, no good. Tucker, a chance at the offensive rebound. Can't come up with it. Now Elijah Crawford the other way. Crawford now looking to set up the offense. Kirouac comes to set the screen. He turned it over. Pass down the floor to Hahn. He lays it back off and a wide open layup for Shane Lincoln, his first two points of the game. And good full floor awareness by Steve Hahn. 
Let's cut it down to a one possession game. And you're right about the awareness there from Hahn. A lot of times you get the big guy out in transition. He wants to try to dunk it really no matter what stands in his way. But like you said, great awareness to see that he doesn't have the angle and just dish it off for an easy bucket. And he fouls Indersadis there. He's going to send him to the line. Indersadis, the number 85 overall prospect in his class. Plays his AAU ball with Mean Streets of the Nike EYBL and was the MVP of the 2023 Basketball Without Borders camps. Misfiring there, we've got a couple of substitutes coming back into the game for either team. Now Sebastian Wilkins will re-enter for Brewster. Yeah, Indrasadis, a, a guy that is going to hit the college basketball level at Iowa State, and he is not going to be daunted by anything he sees in the Big 12. A, a guy with national team experience for Lithuania at the U18 Euros last year uh, and like you said a competitor at Basketball Without Borders Europe uh, as the MVP of that camp uh, that's a pretty serious honor to take home uh, among some of the best players your age not just in, in the country anymore in the world. Here's Harris with 10 on the shot clock looking to force the issue to Han in the corner the big man fires up the three and he's brought him within a point. Big shot there and some big minutes off the bench for Steve Hahn. And now an errant pass down the floor. Sebastian Wilkins wasn't ready for it and it goes back to Bishop O'Connor. See if they can take advantage of the miscue with just over five minutes left to play in our first half. Shane Lincoln with the ball, possesses an offer from Bryant. Into the high post now to Jaden Harris. Contested 18 footer bottoms and a lead for Bishop O'Connell. It's taken a little bit of time for Bishop O'Connell to settle into things here in the first half, but now they're running better offense in the half court. That was the thing before. It was just kind of sticking. They were relying on Tucker to create shots, but now some consistency in the half court. Shot no good by Wilkins. The tip at the rim neither by Crawford, but still it's Brewster that has the ball. Well, I spoke too soon. They turn it over. Here come the Knights of Bishop O'Connell. No look pass down the floor. Laying it up and in is Shane Lincoln again. And a three-point lead for the Knights. And here comes that pressure. Andrew is picked up in the full court by Tim Walker. He's able to get it across the timeline. Driving with DJ Sign. Tough floater, no good, but the putback is pure. Sebastian Wilkins up to seven points. Pass down the floor to Harris. Nearly lost it out of bounds. Bishop O'Connell with the basketball and a one-point lead. Harris in the paint, pump fakes, rejected from behind by Jacobson. Offensive rebound won't go at the rim either, and it's taken away by Brewster. And again, Jacobson just takes up so much space in the lane with that wingspan. Not even a shot really there that you thought he was necessarily going to get to, and he absolutely erases it. Here's Crawford, now on to the right side wing to Wilkins. Back up top, Jacobson wants to take the three, it's no good. Rebounded by Walker, and Bishop O'Connell will push. Into the front court now to Harris. Harris hooks a pass to Tucker. Bryson Tucker looking to penetrate. Scoop shot up, no good. Rebounded by Jacobson. And Jacobson altering a lot of shots here early. From coast to coast, Wilkins wants it. It's knocked out of bounds. Good defense by Lincoln. It'll stay with Brewster. Aiden Calker checks back into the game along with A.J. Swinton for Bishop O'Connell. A couple of starters back on the floor for Joe Wooten. If you're Brewster here, you're looking at an opportunity. Run a good set on this out of bounds and bring a little bit of that momentum back. Obviously, the dunk uh, there from Wilkins will help with that, but if you can grab the lead back here, it'd be huge. Here's Crawford through the defense of Swinton, able to put it home. Elijah Crawford up to four points. Now Walker, other end of the floor, to Tucker. Tucker met by Andrew Zaitis. See if Tucker will isolate here. 12 seconds of the shot clock. Instead, he gives way to Walker. Walker off the Hahn screen, using up the dribble. Now to Calker, the entry pass to Hahn. Tough take, it's blocked away by Jacobson and taken away by Brewster. That was just an impossible ask late in the shot clock. That's simply not a shot you're going to get away with against a 7-2 guy with that kind of wingspan. You can't fade away in that kind of situation. You need a little bit of separation, and there was absolutely none of it. 
Here's Jacobson up top. Sebastian Wilkins has it taken away by Walker. He throws it down the floor to Tucker who slams it in with two hands. We'll see if that's a momentum for Bishop O'Connell who regained the lead with just over two minutes to play here in the half. Crawford slowing up the offense now to Jacobson. Jacobson, an errant pass out of bounds. It goes back to the Knights of Bishop O'Connell. And that's back-to-back -back possessions that the ball pressure from A.J. Swinton causes problems for Sebastian Wilkins. First, he comes up with the deflection that leads to the steal, and then this time uh, he's able to force an errant pass. See the dunk there from Tucker again. The thing with him is, Bryson Tucker, we talk all the time about the shot creation, the skill, you pair that with that level of athleticism you saw right there, and, and you can see why he's a top 20 player in the nation. But back to A.J. Swinton, those last couple of possessions, forcing the steal and then the turnover, that kind of ball pressure, Leonard Hamilton's going to like that at Florida State, isn't he? <laughs> Leonard Han Hamilton is going to be a big fan of that kind of ball pressure on the wing, I'm sure. And Swinton of Bishop O'Connell originally committed, or committed to Virginia Tech before flipping over to Florida State, like you mentioned, that high level of defense that the Seminoles like to play. On the other side of things for Brewster, down by just a point, but unforced errors, I think, have been the difference for them. Between that and Bryson Tucker of Bishop O'Connell in his game leading 12 points, I think that you know Brewster's going to want to have some of these early possessions back because they've at times been a little careless with the basketball. Exactly, and I said it before, even going beyond the turnovers, they were kind of leaning on Indrasadis early in this in the first quarter of this game to knock some shots down, some tough shots late in the shot clock. You don't want to be playing late in the shot clock all that often. And if you can avoid that moving forward and you can run some offense, get yourself some easier looks earlier in the shot clock, then I think you're in for a pretty competitive game. This is Kulker, a lot of contact, no whistle. It leads to a possession for Brewster, trailing by a point. 90 seconds left in our first half. Crawford off the Jacobson screen. He's double teamed. It's hedged well by O'Connell. Running out of options, he traveled. And another turnover to give the ball back to the Knights. Again, three straight empty possessions there. Uh, first, the steal for Swinton that leads to the dunk. Pass thrown away, and now the travel. And uh, when you've got a Bishop O'Connell team that has this much length that can get up the line on you like that, you have to be aware of your surroundings because a double team like that can come out of nowhere. You have to be crisp with your passes because you have guys with quick hands that can get into those passing lanes. And we've seen it three straight possessions that just uh, some some unfocused play, you could say, from Brewster has come back to bite him in opportunities to take the lead. Here's Swinton in the low post, fading away. He can't get it to go. It's rebounded by DJ Shine. Shine looking to force the issue across the timeline. Lays it off for Jenkins. Jenkins in the lane. Now back out the shine in the corner. He stepped on the sideline and another turnover to give the ball to Bishop O'Connell. And none of these, except that first steal, have been forced errors. You could argue that for the, the second turnover there with the pass thrown out of bounds. But at the end of the day, that's going to go down as an unforced error because it was just a bad pass. So uh, again, that's four straight possessions. Brewster has had a chance to take the lead back in this game, and they've given it right away. Here's Tim Walker, the junior. Now out to Wyatt Norton. Now Tucker. Looks like he wants to isolate here. 10 seconds to shoot. Indrasadis to play the defense. Tucker rises and scores. He's up to 14 points in the game, and it's a three-point lead with the shot clock turned off. Just over 20 seconds left to play in the first half. And you want to talk about focus. Your help side defender there is Jacobson at seven foot two, blocking out the sun, you could say, when it comes <laughs> to his view of the rim. Tucker not phased at all, and he puts it in. Here's Crawford downhill, kicking, wide open three. Shine, can he get it? No, he can't. Jacobson tips the rebound back. Just a couple of seconds left to play. It's taken away by Tucker, who's fouled with 1.5 seconds left to play here in the half. It's an odd spot to inbound the basketball from, and you're just going to have to chuck it quickly. Sweating the inbound. We'll see if it, who he gets it to. He throws it into the front court. Harris turns, fires no good. 25 to 22 will be our score at the half. 14 first half points from Bryson Tucker to pace Bishop O'Connell will have the early advantage. We'll step aside for just a moment. Return with a second half of action here from the Western Maryland Classic on the campus of Garrett College.
Welcome back. Just a couple of seconds away before the start of the second half here at the Western Maryland Classic at Deep Creek on the campus of Garrett College. It's Luke Wiggs and Daniel Woods hanging out with you and some impressive individual performances from that first half of play, Daniel, as we had 14 points from Bryson Tucker to pace all scorers and Noyes Indresatis, the leading scorer in that first half for Brewster with nine. And I would expect those two individuals to get some significant touches here in the second half of play. You're right, and the most impressive thing is they've done it up against one another for the majority of this game. Tucker, obviously a known commodity coming into this game, five-star prospect, top 20 in the nation. Uh, but what he's really flashed and what we talked about in that first half is the ability to score at all three levels. He hasn't knocked down a three yet in this game, but the mid-range game has been there. The finishing at the rim has been there. He knocks down a couple more free throws, and this is a bigger lead for Bishop O'Connell. On the other side for Indrasadis, his shot making, so, so impressive uh, in the mid-range, going off the dribble, always under control, always with his feet underneath him, straight up, straight down on the jump shot. And the guy that really stood out to me beyond those two in the first half was Sebastian Wilkins for this Brewster Academy team. Seven points for him, just a high-motor guy that is going to do the dirty work for you and had a couple of impressive plays there in the first half. Brewster basketball as we begin half number two. And the Bobcats trail by three points. DJ Shine struggling to get things going offensively in the first half of play, but more than capable of flipping that switch in a moment's notice. Now up top to Crawford with 10 seconds to shoot. Indrasadis wants to force the issue in a deep three. That's no good. It's rebounded by Bishop O'Connell into the front court. Good hands in transition from Crawford at least to stop the break. But it'll still be Bishop O'Connell basketball. This is one of a couple games that we're going to be broadcasting today on League Ready TV coming up in around the 4 o'clock hour. Legacy Early College will take on Veritas Academy and 6 o'clock, La Lumiere and Canyon International Academy will do battle as well right here in Garrett College. That's some more to be settled between now and then. This is A.J. Swinton, fishing down low to Tucker. Went into isolate again on Indrasadis. Skip pass in the corner, catch and shoot three by Norton, no good. Rebounded by Indrasadis. And if Norton can knock a shot like that down, pull Jacobson away from the basket, it'll open so much up for this O'Connell team. And if you can spread the floor a little bit more, a lot more opportunities at the rim. Wilkins from 15, no good. It's cleared away by Norton. Ball poke free into Shadis, wants to dive on the hardwood, but he can't come up with it. Tucker across to Swinton. Swinton looking to penetrate, contact, and a blocking foul is called, so count the basket. Well, we'll wait and see if it counts or not. What do the Zebras have to say? Yeah, it looks like they're gonna take that foul on the floor. We played the first minute or so of the second half. Neither team yet to score. Deflected pass to Norton. He's in trouble there in the corner. And the long arms of Jacobson denying him a chance to get the ball free. Now to Tucker, takes a long three and hits. Bryson Tucker extends his impressive afternoon up to 17 points now. Right on cue, I said he hadn't knocked down a three in the first half and his first shot of the second half goes down and it's a deep one. Here's Crawford. Now to Wilkins in the corner. He's guarded by Swinton. They're working around the perimeter. Oh, Indrasadis got the step, got to the rim. It's rejected. Taken away by Swinton, knocked out of bounds. And it's going to go to Bishop O'Connell. Just met him right at the rim and sent that shot back. It was a little bit of a slow start, you would say, for A.J. Swinton in this game. He still hasn't scored, uh, but he's just been everywhere on the defensive end, really from that second quarter on. And we've seen him get a hand in the passing lane. We've seen him pressure the basketball and now protecting the rim. Really impressive defensive effort from him so far. Swinton palming the basketball in that big right hand. Dishes underneath the Tucker. Will the double team come? He's matched up with the smaller DJ Shine. He fades away and Shine with great defense. The ball poked free in the lane and going hard to the deck is Aiden Kalker who's fouled. That's another foul, I believe. They're going to assess to Sebastian Wilkins, and that's his third. We talked about it before. Bishop O'Connell, after a rough first couple of minutes, were consistently getting the ball into the paint, drawing fouls on this Brewster team, and that's the third against Wilkins, something we'll have to keep an eye on as this one goes on. Walker looking to get it in. It's tipped out of bounds. Indrasadis again there. Johnny on the spot. Three points scored in the second half. They belong to Bishop O'Connell. They have the basketball now. Walker between the circles. Scanning, guarded by Elijah Crawford. Trying to get around him, takes him to the rim. Now kicks to the corner again to Norton. 
Now a low entry pass that's handled by Swinton. Pass is up top and a good head fake by Walker buries that jumper. And Tim Walker scores for the first time today. Great awareness of the shot clock there from Tim Walker. Knew he had the opportunity to create his own shot, still with a little bit of time, and now another opportunity for O'Connell to extend this lead. And a backcourt violation there. Elijah Crawford tried to walk the tightrope, or tightrope, excuse me, and wasn't able to do so. Whistle and a timeout on the floor, and Brewster want to talk things over. They've come out of this second half locker room, Daniel Woods, a little bit flat and struggling to get things going in the half court. Uh, we saw that in the first half at, at times as well, and the th second half has started the same way for this Brewster team. The scoring is not very spread out. We talked about it earlier. They're without some guys today. Indrasetis has done his job to carry the load, but they haven't scored in the second half. Elijah Crawford has hit a couple of tough shots. Wilkins has done his dirty work, but beyond that, outside of those three guys, you've got two points from Daniel Jacobson, and that's it for this offense. So you've got to find an answer one way or another. See some of the work in the half court here by Bishop O'Connell and a great take there by Walker, that key head fake to give himself some space. But over in that Brewster sideline, Jason Smith, he mentioned he wins 81% of his games. He's coached 21 different players to go on and play at the NBA level. Donovan Mitchell, Will Barton, TJ Warren. If anybody's going to be able to turn this around, get them playing the right brand of basketball, it's going to be Coach Smith. Uh, you would think that's absolutely right. And He's going up, like we talked about before the game started, going up against somebody with just as much experience and maybe not the same winning percentage, but just as much pedigree on the other side with, with Joe Wooten. So the argument could be made if anybody's going to coach his team to extending a lead in this situation, it may just be Joe Wooten. And you mentioned that Wooten name might draw some interest for some people. We'll talk a little bit more about Coach Wooten here in just a moment. Bishop O'Connell basketball. Tough take out of the high post by Swinton. Jumper no good. Indrasadis clears the other way. He's got numbers. He throws the lob, the jam by Sebastian Wilkins. Runs the floor like a guard. He's up to nine points. Quick answer, other side of the floor. Tumbling to the deck. We'll have some free throws in coming as Wyatt Norton was knocked to the deck. And that's exactly what you want your team to do when you give up a dunk like that. I mean, just tremendous job running the floor there by Wilkins and a great feed from Indrasadis. Uh, but that's exactly what you want if you're Joe Wooten to see your team do when you give up a dunk like that, a big momentum play like that. You want to get the ball out. You want to throw it up the floor. There's a good chance uh, even a team like Brewster that throws down their fair share of dunks is going to be fired up and maybe a little distracted after a play like that. You want to get the ball up the floor. You want to get a shot away and try to get something back at the rim. Some half-court pressure applied now after those free throws split at the line by Norton. Brewster trailing by seven. Indrasadis, what can he come up with? Dishes on the baseline to Jacobson. Passes up top to Crawford. Left alone from three, and he got it to go. And that's the shot that the Bobcats needed. Now Walker the other way. The lead's been cut to four. In the lane, through the trees, finishing is A.J. Swinton for his first two points of the game and some tough ones at that. Now Crawford. Jacobson looking to set the screen. Crawford looking to spend free. On the roll, the ball is poked away. It's poked away by Bishop O'Connell again. The Knights come up with a key turnover. Swinton in transition. Indrasadis cuts him off. And back up top to Walker. The fast pace, last couple of minutes, have stagnated on this possession. Swinton, now Tucker. Swinton sets the screen, Tucker rejects it, drives in the lane, pump fakes, reverse layup up and no good. A little too much English on that shot. Taken away by Crawford, he runs the other way. Crawford with a spin in transition, puts it up with the left, no good. Follows his shot, kicks outside, Indrasadis wide open for three, he can't get it to go. It's tipped out of bounds, it's going to stay with Brewster. Didn't get the finish there from Elijah Crawford, but seeing him come alive these last couple of possessions have been good. He's put in a big effort on defense, creating some ball pressure for this team, hit a couple tough shots there in the first half, but you get him going offensively, particularly get his quickness out in transition, his willingness to push the ball down the floor, uh, and that can really, I think at least, be what can push Brewster back into potentially tying this game or taking the lead. Wilkins to inbound. Remember, he's playing with three fouls for this Brewster team. 
Crawford getting away from his defender. Tough take in the lane and good defense apply, but the offensive rebound again is Wilkins to put it up and in. Back to a four point lead for Bishop O'Connell. A change of direction to transition shot rejected at the rim as Walker went to the rack and Kerouac fouled him there. We're gonna get a couple of free throws. Kerouac, another interesting story. The Cummings, Georgia native, has that letter of intent signed with Georgia Tech. Was just about six foot one when he was a freshman in high school and nine inches later and a couple of collegiate offers later, he's going to be playing basketball at a pretty high level with that pretty high height. And it's a signee for Damon Stoudemire at Georgia Tech and Cole Kerouac that kind of falls into what he's talked about lately about trying to do to bring that Georgia Tech program back. Uh, it is a, a program that you know, has been to the Final Four uh, in the last 25 years. Uh, but the end of the Josh Pastner era, not necessarily the best time at Georgia Tech. Damon Stoudemire has talked about bringing the talent level up, bringing the energy back to Georgia Tech basketball, and Kirilak, a guy that could help start that off. Nearly a steal in transition instead of foul as Norton cut off Kirilak going to the rim. We saw some full court pressure applied by Bishop O'Connell after a couple of made Walker free throws. And now it's Kirilak to go to the line. Played at North Forsyth High School last season, averaged 14 points per game. As he goes to the line for two. Two players in this game early in double figures. Bryson Tucker of Bishop O'Connell with 17. First missed free throw there by Kirilak. And Andrew Sadis as well as, or rather make that Sebastian Wilkins has 11. Andrew Sadis just below that mark, he's got nine. And Wilkins just continues to impress the longer this game goes on. And again, it's just, he's the guy in there doing the dirty work for this Brewster team. And the last bucket coming off an offensive rebound where he just, fought harder to get to the basketball more than anybody else and his his job getting out and running in transition uh, has been a big part of that as well. Kirouac splits his free throws three minutes left to play here in the third quarter Bishop O'Connell basketball leading by five. Walker has done well here in the third quarter running the offense now Jaden Harris Walker gets it back off the screen eight seconds to shoot Walker hesitates, steps to the free throw line, misses everything but the net. It goes out of bounds, and it goes to Brewster. Really just nothing got started for O'Connell on that possession. You mentioned Walker doing a great job in this second half of running the show, uh, but just not able to get his team into much of anything there. Good defensive effort from Brewster to take away the entries into those sets. Jeremiah Jenkins in. Here's a corner three up and no good by Wilkins. Kirouac comes up with the offensive rebound, gives it out to Crawford, able to answer. And that's what seven foot can do for you. You get the offensive rebound and the kick out for a wide open triple, and it's a two point game. The freshman, Amani Asari, now to run the point. He gets the screen from Tucker. Asari in the lane, nowhere to go. Kicks out now to Harris. Harris has it poked free as Crawford dives on the hardwood. And the double team coming, a foul committed by Wilkins, and that's his fourth. And really in this third quarter, Wilkins has been the most consistently productive player on the floor for Brewster, and he's going to have to come out now. And another issue that that presents is while we've talked about the size advantage that Brewster has at the center position with Kirilak and Jacobson, positionally, O'Connell has had the size advantages really one through four for the majority of this game. And now Brewster going to be forced to play very small with Indrositis at six foot four being the second tallest player on the floor. Jaden Harris at the line, misses the first free throw. A 19 point performance against Oak Ridge and that victory for Bishop O'Connell was eight of 10 for the field. The three star is the ninth ranked player in the state of Virginia. Drawing interest from Mississippi State, Missouri, NC State. Standing at six foot six, good size, and a chance to make it a three point game with a made free throw here. Unfortunately, he comes up short. It's rebounded by Elijah Crawford. Crawford's got 10 points in the contest now. Yo yo's the basketball with that left hand. Gets around the defense, wants to take it to the rim. Now kicks out wide open. Jenkins, three, no good. The rebound fought for. Andrasadis comes up with it in the corner. Dishes underneath the Kerouac. He spins into contact. He's fouled on the floor. Foul underneath the basket. 
No free throws to come with it, it was on the floor. Bishop O'Connell subbing, Aiden Kolker comes back into the game. Still Brewster basketball, trailing by two. The entry pass deflected and thrown right into play to Crawford, takes it to the rim and scores, we're tied up. And Crawford, I said it earlier, coming alive here in this third quarter, just using that pressure to create opportunities, using the motor, much like Sebastian Wilkins has in this game, to put himself in positions to put the ball in the basket. Here's nearly a turnover. Tucker has it in his hands. He's not had the ball very much these last few minutes. Shane Lincoln on the perimeter. He's trying to get it back to Tucker. Andrew Sadis there to greet him. Eight seconds to shoot. Tucker in the lane, kicks back out. Calker fires for three, it's no good. Tipped underneath the basket and taken away by Elijah Crawford. Ahead to Jenkins, maybe got away with a travel. Andrew Sadis driving the baseline. He's cut off, he has the ball knocked free, he's fouled. And that foul assessed to Shane Lincoln. There's some free throws in coming here. And good awareness, you know, when you're in no man's land and you're able to come away with, well, a foul there. The high IQ basketball that only Sandra Sadis plays. Looking to get into double figures and does just that with the made free throw. Just over a minute left to play here in the third quarter. And now a two-point lead for Brewster. This top 15 matchup between Bishop O'Connell and Brewster Academy. It's Knights basketball. This is Lincoln driving down the lane. Lincoln looking for help, finds it in Tucker. Andrew Zaitis there to greet him. Hahn coming to set that screen. Tucker looking for just a, an inch of separation. He thinks he found it, and he did. He buries another mid-range jumper. Tightly contested. It's going to prompt a tight out with 40 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. And again, it's the body control from Bryson Tucker that is so impressive. His ability in the mid-range keeps the ball on a string and spins right into that shot. Doesn't matter where his momentum's going as he brings the ball forward. Once he's in the air, he's square, he gets the shot away cleanly, and he knocks it down. Really, really impressive to see his ability to make shots, again, in the mid-range, which is not easy. It's, it's not easy to make those contested shots off the dribble, but at six foot seven, he has the length to extend over guys and his release is clean, his release is high every single time, and that's a huge part of that success. He's got 19 of the 37 for Bishop O'Connell. I mentioned earlier the 19 point performance that Jaden Harris had against Oak Ridge. Tucker in that game went for 20. So more than capable of taking these games over. You mentioned the Brewster ability to deny him the ball early in the third quarter, but at some point when you're just so good, the basketball is going to find you. You're right, and I think part of their ability to deny him the basketball was they changed the matchup a little bit. Indrasadis, a guy that's going to be able to stay in front of him off the dribble more often than not, uh, was his matchup in the first half. More in the second half, Brewster has gone to the bigger, longer option with Sebastian Wilkins guarding Tucker, but he started to get those touches right back as soon as Sebastian Wilkins went to the bench with that fourth foul. 40 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Full court pressure applied by Bishop O'Connell. Crawford working against the defense of Shane Lincoln. Gets a screen. Now passing to the left side wing to Jenkins. Skip pass all the way in the corner to Shine's able to come up with it like a wide receiver. Shine forces up the issue. Mid-range jumper no good as the lid remains on the rim for DJ Shine. Here's Shane Lincoln driving coast to coast. A lot of contact, shot up, count the basket. Great take by Lincoln up to six points and the body control to get that floater in transition and draw the contact. Again, Lincoln really moving full speed down the lane, gets the contact from behind, has Indrasadis in trying to take the charge. A great job to stop his momentum get the shot away, not go crashing through the defender, and still finish through the contact of the defender coming in behind. Uh, it Honestly, on the replay, looks like a pretty routine play, and it's the first thing from it. Ten seconds left to play in the third quarter. Crawford across the timeline, double teamed immediately as Hahn puts two hands on him and he'll foul him. Six seconds left to play. It's Bishop O'Connell leading by three after that three-point play by Shane Lincoln. 
couple of seconds to get a couple of dribbles away before the final shot here of the third quarter. Shine a inbound right in front of his own bench. He gets it in quickly to Andrus Adis. Five seconds left to play. Skip pass, Crawford to beat the buzzer, gets the, no, the bank shot rolls just around the rim and out. So Bishop O'Connell will maintain that three-point lead as we head to the fourth and final quarter. As you look for adjustments by both teams, Daniel, that was a slow start to that quarter by Brewster. We're able to turn things up offensively, and you're without Sebastian Wilkins. You'd have to think for the first couple of minutes playing with those four fouls. You have to wonder, besides Indrazadis, who you know is going to be keyed on defensively, who the second option is going to be for Brewster as they look to come back in this contest. I think after what we saw in that quarter, it has to be Elijah Crawford getting things done offensively. He goes for eight points on that quarter, eight of his 12 points coming in that third quarter, knocks down a pair of three-pointers, and he's shown that his quickness can cause problems for these O'Connell defenders, particularly pushing the ball in transition, getting out ahead of everybody, and creating opportunities going to the rim. So if I'm Brewster, I'm getting the ball to Elijah Crawford, I'm letting him play with the ball in his hands, maybe moving Indrasadis off the basketball a little bit, let him spot up, get some easy looks at the hoop, and then we can build more towards it, get Wilkins back in for the last few minutes, and get out running in transition with him and Crawford. This is a Brewster team that averages 63 points per game, so a nod to the Bishop O'Connell defense, Daniel. Slowing things up ever so slightly in the half court. You'd have to say that Brewster's been a little out of rhythm after they were the team that got off to the hot start. They scored 17 of the first 27 points of this game, but after that, you'd have to make the argument that Bishop O'Connell has dictated the tempo. Uh, you would think so, and again, they've been able to push. They've been able to use the athleticism in the open floor, and Brewster, uh, for all that they've really done in this game they have not scored a lot out of half court sets uh, which you have to give credit to O'Connell with their length getting up the line forcing tough passes forcing turnovers we saw that stretch earlier in this game where it was four straight possessions that Brewster turned the basketball over and O'Connell obviously with their defense having a lot to do with that Bryson Tucker touches the basketball first here in the fourth quarter he's got 19 points to lead all scorers and gives way to Shane Lincoln. Bishop O'Connell leading, but leading by just three. Entry pass to Tucker. What can he do with the basketball? Tucker scanning, fades away through the contact. Again, it's no good off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Brewster. Elijah Crawford, can he go coast to coast? He's turned away, gives it up top. Jenkins for the tie, can't get it to go. Rebounded by Tucker. Tucker, no look pass to the corner to Lincoln. Lincoln into the lane, spinning and looking, surveying, gives it back up top to Swinton. Swinton back to Lincoln now, left wing on the entry pass now to Jaden Harris. Harris backing down his defender, a lot of strength here. Spins to the rim and he's gonna earn a couple of free throws on a foul that should be assessed to Elijah Crawford. And again, the size advantage being an opportunity here for O'Connell when they get into the half court. They've brought Wilkins back in, but they brought him back in at the five. Jacobson and Kirouac both on the bench, which again forces Indrasitis and Crawford in particular to guard up the lineup. And you've got the 6'6 Harris backing down the 6'2 Crawford, and it leads to a good opportunity at the rim that leads to the foul. Missed free throw from Harris. It remains a one possession game for the time being. Got another shot to change that. Not able to do so. Indrasitis now ahead to Jeremiah Jenkins. The Brown commit, using up the dribble. Throw into the left side now to Wilkins, back into the game with those four fouls. Here's a deep three-pointer, up and in. Elijah Crawford has tied the game. That's his third triple of the contest. And again, set it between the quarters. Crawford has been the guy that has got it done in this second half along with Wilkins. He's got to be the guy that they play through here in the fourth. Jaden Harris in the high post. Now back to Lincoln. Lincoln looking for the entry pass to Tucker as he posts up Crawford. Crawford holding his own. Tucker spins around and forces up a shot with the right. Can't get it to go. Tipped up a couple of times and rebounded by Sebastian Wilkins. Down the floor to DJ Shine. Shine wants to pull it in transition. Can't get it. The rebound fought for again. It's taken away by Bishop O'Connell. We're tied with six minutes left to play. Lincoln nearly lost it, did lose it. He turned it over. It's taken away by Jenkins. Ahead to Crawford. He fires again. It's no good. Offensive rebound. Indrasitis keeps the play alive. His shot is up and in from five feet away. The little turnaround. As Brewster regains the lead here in the fourth quarter. 
Expecting a frenetic finish to this contest. Tucker left wing, guarded by Wilkins. Remember, he's playing with four fouls. Now Norton in the corner on the entry pass. This is Harris spinning through the contact, got it to go. At a certain point, 6'6", six, six just beats 5'11 in the paint, and Jaden Harris knows that, he goes straight to the bucket. Tied up at 42, 5.30 left to play. Elijah Crawford has 15 points now in the contest. Idrisaitis, double teamed. He's in a little bit of trouble now, hooks a pass. Great find, DJ Shine, reverse layup up and in. Count the basket. Acrobatic finish, DJ Shine had struggled offensively until now. He's going to the line to shoot. A tremendous finish there from DJ Shine and a tremendous find to get him the basketball. The cross court pass out of the double team and he feels the defender on his back, has the wherewithal to go under the basket and spin it back in. Uh, you see why he's got as much college interest as he has and why he's headed to Murray State. Murray State commit and need I remind you of another athletic guard that played at Murray State a couple of years ago. Five minutes left to play here in the fourth quarter. A foul at midcourt as Shine trying to reach and pick the pocket of Lincoln. But again, this is a Brewster team that has not gone very deep into its bench, largely because it doesn't have a very deep bench. And now you've got Wilkins playing with four and three for DJ Shine in terms of fouls. Here's Walker. Turned away at the rim by Shine. Now guarded by Jenkins, looking for options. Swinton driving the baseline, nearly lost it, fades away. He can't get it to go. Tipped underneath the basket, Tucker thought he had it for a moment. We've got a foul. He reached over the back of Shine, although it looks as though this foul is going to be against Brewster. And it's the fourth against DJ Shine. So they've played with this small lineup for the entire fourth quarter, but you're looking at two of the guys on the floor right now with four personals. Harris trying to force the issue, got it. A lot of contested jumpers in this game. One point lead for Brewster, and it's Bobcat basketball. Crawford, the native of Augusta, Georgia, looking to hand it off, instead throws it to the corner. Jenkins fires up a long three, and got it. Jeremiah Jenkins flashes in, a four-point advantage now for Brewster. In a third quarter that was dominated by Bishop O'Connell, the Bobcats have something to say about that here in the fourth. Tucker's isolated on Shine now. Now here comes the double team. He hooks it up top to Harris. Harris down low, Lincoln pump fakes once, twice, and is able to score. Wilkins playing with four fouls, couldn't do much there, and that's gonna prompt a timeout now by Bishop O'Connell. I've really been impressed with Shane Lincoln's ability to control himself in the lane, go through contact, finish at the rim. That's not an easy thing to do. And at six foot five, he has the length to do it, but he's not got a ton of bulk to him. He's, but he takes that bump, is able to stay straight up and down, get the ball to the rim. And that's what stood out to me the most about him in this game. And he's been really one of the more impressive guys on the floor for me for this Bishop O'Connell team. Uh, and really not one of the guys that has a ton of the Division I interest that a guy like a Bryson Tucker or an A.J. Swinton or a Jaden Harris has. Lincoln, with that Bryant offer, has been really impressive to me with his ability to finish inside. Getting a look right into the huddle of Brewster here as Jason Smith goes to the grease pen to draw up this play as D.J. Shine demolishes a bottle of Gatorade. <laughs> and he's somebody else that's really turned it up here in the fourth quarter. Struggled with his shot early has had some impactful plays offensively and defensively, as you would expect at this level. You know, a handful of guys at just a moment's notice can flip the switch. We've seen that from Jaden Harris here in the second half from Bishop O'Connell. And when you've got so much talent, you've got so many different guys that can take a game over. And that's really, I think, what you forget about when you've got this much talent on the floor. Just about everybody in this game is a Division I basketball player. <laughs> so you may be a role player at Brewster Academy or Bishop O'Connell, but you drop one of these guys into Southern Garrett High School just down the street from us here in McHenry, Maryland, and they're going to be the best player on the floor. Uh, so uh, all of these guys have the ability to take that step and right away make something happen. Just a stray caught there by Southern Garrett. Oh, come on. Uh, they'll be competing <laughs> here later in the Western Maryland Classic. They'll get their chance. It's Brewster up by two and with possession of the basketball under four minutes left to play here in the fourth. Here's a three again up by Crawford. Can't get this one. It's rebounded by Tucker. Poked out of bounds by Luke Johnson. Haven't seen him much today. And an effort play off the bench maintains possession for Brewster. 
And Johnson just coming in behind Tucker and getting a hand in there looked like it was a sorry that had the last touch on it. Uh, but you know, Luke Johnson haven't played at all in this game up until this point. Get out there and make something happen right away. Jenkins to trigger. Brewster with 20 on the shot clock. Looking to get it in, does so to Johnson. Johnson gives it out to Wilkins. Wilkins back to Johnson in the corner. Back to Wilkins underneath, has the mismatch, able to finish. Sebastian Wilkins still playing hard with those four fouls. He's up to 13. Amani Asari. The freshman running the point now for Bishop O'Connell, trailing by four points. Have seen their lead evaporate. Into the high post now to Swinton. Swinton is bothered again by Johnson, put the ball on the deck, nearly turned it over. We've got a volley for possession here in the first jump ball of the game. A couple of zeros mixing it up there, Swinton and Johnson. Johnson's been on the floor for just a couple of seconds and has made a couple of high energy plays. And Joe Wooten is furious over on the sideline. And you can see why if you go back and watch that play. Johnson coming in from behind as Swinton dove on top of it. Kind of came over his back as he dove down on top of that basketball. Able to get into a position where he's not really in a fouling position, but you can understand why Joe Wooten would want to call there. Here's Jenkins to Johnson in the corner. Drives, makes the extra pass up top to Crawford. Thought about it. Now he looks to penetrate. All the way to the rim. He hangs and scores. Elijah Crawford with tremendous this body control. It's a six point advantage. On the other end is Harris. Harris looking for the answer. The shot is up and it should be goaltending against Elijah Crawford. It looks like that ball was on its way down and the officials say it was. Still really impressive for <laughs> Elijah Crawford at six foot two to just take that ball out of the air. But back to that last offensive possession for Brewster. We saw a slow start for Crawford. He had just four points in the first half, but now you see why he's got that four-star pedigree, why he's going to Stanford. This is a guy that can go out there and can get you buckets, and he can do it in some really tough ways. Jenkins able to get the ball across the timeline and beat the full court man pressure. Jenkins now thinks he can go to the rim. Extra pass to the corner. Johnson wide open for three, and he buries it. Big shot from the junior there. 55-48. Luke Johnson making a big impact in limited minutes so far here in the fourth. Here's Tucker looking for the answers. Spinning inside, passing up top to Asari. Asari now penetrating, and he's fouled on his way to the rim by Jeremiah Jenkins. Bishop O'Connell running out of time, trailing by seven points. And some free throws in coming now for the freshman Asari. Named one of the top freshmen to watch by prephoops.com for this Alexandria, or make it Arlington, Virginia based program. A little too long there in the first free throw. Sorry to make it a six point game. Unable to do so. Crawford pulls it down. We've got some pressure here off the missed free throw. Andrew Sidus across the timeline. Throws it underneath. Wilkins reverse layup. You bet. He's having himself a heck of a game. 57 48. Brewster starting to pull away. Can Tucker change that? Andrew Sidus won't give him any space. Tucker now with the switch on to Johnson. Tucker has to use up the dribble. Now to Harris. Tucker wants it back. Harris wants to take it himself. He finishes through the contact. And Bishop O'Connell will not go quietly. Jaden Harris in double figures. All of that coming in the second half. Another guy that didn't start very fast in this game that has been a huge factor late, particularly in the fourth for this O'Connell team. A great job by Brewster making that switch. A good call by Jason Smith to put Sebastian Wilkins on Bryson Tucker in the second half, but it has opened some things up for Jaden Harris. It makes it a two possession game, 106 seconds left to play. Mr. O'Connell needs to get a couple of stops now. Crawford across the timeline. Shuffled the feet there before giving it away to Andrews Adis. He's guarded now by Amani Asari. And timeout taken by Brewster. Wanting to make the clock there, friend. 90 seconds left to play. Six-point game here. 
And you'd have to assume that Indrasadis and Crawford are going to touch the ball a lot over these remaining seconds. You would think so. Those two are your best ball handlers on the floor, but we've seen Jeremiah Jenkins knock down an open shot. We've seen Luke Johnson knock down an open shot, getting those three-point opportunities because Indrasadis and Crawford have so much gravity when they have the basketball in their hands. But the thing that stood out to me for this Bishop O'Connell team Bryson Tucker has not had the basketball very much in this second half. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say that. He got a couple of good looks in the third after Sebastian Wilkins went to the bench with his fourth foul. But they've done a great job of keeping the ball out of Tucker's hands here in the fourth quarter in particular. And it's led to them being able to make this run. It was Tucker's shot making that gave O'Connell the lead going into halftime. And he's been taken out of the game late in this one. More games to come this afternoon on League Ready TV from the Western Maryland Classic coming up in just a couple of moments' time. Legacy Early College will take on Veritas Academy. That game projected to tip off at 4 o'clock, and then at 6, it'll be La Lumiere against Canyon International. Some high-profile basketball to be played here at Garrett College over the next couple of hours. And we appreciate you all making us a part of your Thursday afternoon. Six-point game. Indrositis looking to get it in. Does so into the backcourt to Elijah Crawford, picked up immediately by Jaden Harris. The big six foot six defender looking to come up with a turnover here. Crawford spinning free from the pressure. Four to shoot, dishes underneath, and a reverse layup again by Sebastian Wilkins. Sebastian Wilkins with such great presence in the lane, understanding where the defense is coming from. Tucker needs it, got it. And a timeout now taken by Bishop O'Connell. You can see a very uh, frustrated Joe Wooten there as that three is buried by Bryson Tucker. We talked about it a little earlier, but the name Wooten may ring some bells for some of our listeners. Uh, absolutely right. Joe Wooten, the son of Morgan Wooten, who built that DeMatha program that has just produced so many NBA players, won so many games over the years, and his son has taken over this Bishop O'Connell program. I shouldn't say taken over. He's been there for 25 years, <laughs> but he's built this program into a powerhouse that rivals what his father built at DeMatha. It's been tremendously impressive to see. In his 25th season, he's had just one losing season. That was back in 2012. The last game this Bishop O'Connell team played was against the map. It was a victory, 59-54, to a program that, in Bishop O'Connell, I should say, that has sent 55 players that are currently playing or have played Division I college basketball. And one of them that's going to do so is Bryce and Tucker, who just buried that last three. It's a five-point game, still not over. 68 seconds left to play. Bishop O'Connell had used that press for much of the game to speed things up when they wanted to, Daniel, but now they're going to ask for it to get them some turnovers. Yeah, you're right. And again, it's not necessarily to this point uh, been something that you're looking to get the basketball back with, but that's exactly what you have to do now. Indrasadis gets it into Jenkins. Back to Indrasadis to be guarded the length of the floor by Jaden Harris. Now back to Jeremiah Jenkins across the timeline. Bishop O'Connell content not to foul. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Jenkins off the screen and has a pass plucked out of the air by Bishop O'Connell. This is Walker racing ahead of the pack, gives it to Tucker. Tucker spinning baseline, now fades away. The tough shot is no good. The rebound underneath is ripped away by Harris. He puts up a shot up no good, but there's some free throws incoming. It was Calker that kept that rebound alive for Bishop O'Connell going up behind Wilkins and able to really get enough of a hand on it uh, to allow Harris to then pull it away from Wilkins. So uh, the hustle play from Conker there is what sets up this opportunity. And now Harris doing what you want to be able to do in a situation like this, which is score points without any time coming off the clock. He's up to 12. And a very crucial free throw incoming. Harris, got it. 59, 56, here we go. Eight seconds difference between game clock and shot clock. Andrasida scanning, gets it into Crawford. Crawford, as the double team comes, turned it over, and it's a reverse layup up and in by Harris again. It's a one-point game. 59-58, the inbounds pass is tipped out of bounds by Calker. It stays with Brewster. Clock stopped, 27 seconds left to play. Full court pressure really starting to ramp up for Bishop O'Connell. Andrasadis gets it in. This is Jenkins in the backcourt, used up the dribble. The ball's loose, it's taken away. It's Bishop O'Connell basketball. They take a timeout. And another crucial turnover forced by the Knights. 
Again, that pressure coming forward, we've talked about it in the half court to this point, the length on the ball from this Bishop O'Connell team. They bring it out to the full court, and now back-to-back -back times, Harris and Walker able to make things happen on the defensive end, and it sets them up with a golden opportunity here. You're going to have, it looks like, 20 seconds on the shot clock. They're going to reset it to 20, and then they're going to have an opportunity to essentially force Brewster, if you can get a bucket here late, in the shot clock, forced Brewster to go the length of the floor with not much time left to, to try to win this game if if O'Connell can get a good look here. So two questions for you, Daniel Woods. How late in the shot clock do you take this shot? Do you give yourself some time for a potential offensive rebound? And who's going to take it? I think it's, it's foolish to not give yourself time for an offensive rebound. You have to give yourself an opportunity to tip something up on the glass, get something going towards the rim. Uh, but as far as that timing goes you're probably looking at 10 to 12 seconds left on the clock that you're initiating something and again if I'm Joe Wooten I'm initiating something for Bryson Tucker uh, obviously Jaden Harris has done some great things here in the second half Tim Walker's knocked down some tough shots uh, but I want something with Bryson Bryson Tucker right here getting an opportunity at a clean look, potentially post him up on the smaller injuricitis, and then you want somebody like Jaden Harris going to the rim and trying to grab an offensive rebound. And an interesting decision from Brewster to keep this small lineup on the floor. Walker to inbound, 21 seconds left in the game. It's an errant pass, it's out of bounds. Tried to get it into Bryson Tucker and the ball turned over. Well, Bishop O'Connell has gotten so many key turnovers down the stretch, now they're gonna be asked to get one more. Indrazadis to inbound, he gets it into Jenkins. Jenkins sensing the pressure, he's fouled right in front of that Bishop O'Connell bench by the freshman Asari. That entry pass, Tucker sitting down in his stance there, Daniel, was just a little bit past his fingertips, and he just watched it trickle out of bounds. And the pressure from Indrazadis is what does it, he's not able to separate, and now a key here, still two more fouls to give for O'Connell. That's a dangerous pass, Indrazadis gets it back. He's still in the backcourt, though, as he gives it to Wilkins. Wilkins needs some help. Gets it across Jenkins, and we've got a whistle and a 10-second violation called to give the ball back to Bishop O'Connell. Jenkins left his feet to get that ball across the timeline and thought he did it. So did the Brewster bench, and it's going the other way. Now it looks as though they're going to put some time on the clock. I think the argument that Jason Smith is trying to make from Brewster is look at how much time's on the clock. That couldn't have been 10 seconds as the officials convene. And this is a crucial, crucial call in the game. Really struggling to get the ball across the timeline. And Jenkins was able to get the ball away, but not before the 10 second violation was called. And again, you look back at it and there was 21.1 seconds on the clock right. when that ball was inbounded. Well, excuse me, that was 21.1 seconds when the ball was inbounded on the previous foul. You were down to about 18 seconds when the ball was inbounded on the what would have been and that's that second the, opportunity. And that's the case that Jason Smith's trying to make. There's only 10.1 seconds on the clock. <laughs> so that's, that's the case that Jason Smith is trying to make, that 10 seconds have not come off the game clock. Uh, but it looks like the call's going to stand up. And again, you get a second crack at it here if you're Bishop O'Connell. The ball, in my opinion has to go to Bryson Tucker. You've got to set up opportunities for somebody else to potentially get a look, but that's where the basketball has to go. And interesting here, they move Indrasadis back onto Tucker. 10 seconds left to play. They get it into Asari, the freshman. Five seconds left in the contest now. Asari wants to do it himself to the rim. The shot, no good off the rim. Rebounded by Indrasadis, and he's fouled. Man, Asari wanted a foul there. It's one he's not going to get. He left that shot on the front of the rim. Point nine a, seconds a left. Great jump by Indrasadis to completely keep Tucker out of the play. Denied him the basketball. He was not going to get a touch on that play if no Noyes Indrasadis had anything to say about it. And you can see the conversation. Joe Wooten coming off the bench. I think he wanted Asari to pass there. This has been a small lineup for Brewster for most of the fourth quarter. I think they'd be wise to put one of those trees back into the game to have the option to throw the ball down the length of the floor. You're up by a point, point nine seconds left. You just need to get the ball in. You'd have to say, though, if you're Bishop O'Connell, you're going to try to foul before the ball is even inbounded. You would think that 
that's something you could look at here. Frankly, if I'm Joe Wooten, what I'm doing is when this huddle breaks, I'm picking a guy on my team <laughs> to foul somebody, to foul who I think it's not even a free throw shooting situation because they still have a foul to give. That's another factor here. I'm picking somebody on my team. It's like, okay, before the ball is inbounded, you're going to grab this guy, you're going to foul him, and then I'm going to the official that's closest to my bench, and I'm saying before the ball is inbounded, player X is going to foul player Y. I would appreciate it if you would call that foul. <laughs> Not every official is going to give that to you, but there are guys out there, there are a lot of officials out there that will give you that call. Now, is that what you do here? I don't know, but you can't have any time coming off this clock. Andrasadis lobs it into the front court. The ball is tipped. Tucker from midcourt. The shot is no good. Brewster hangs on 59 to 58. The final score is a 22 point performance from Bryson Tucker. Comes up just short for Bishop O'Connell, and it's number 14 that beats number 10. Daniel Woods, your closing thoughts as the teams have yet to shake hands, but it's Brewster that gets the last laugh here. It is, and again, it's Brewster just gutting things out at the end. We saw them fall behind. We saw them start the hot team on the floor, but we saw them fall behind, and as it's come down to it, they're going to put, gonna put half a second on the, on the clock, clock here. We've got half a second left in this game, folks, so we're going to have to take that final graphic away. I think they gave Joe Wooten a timeout before Tucker oh my hoisted that to the basket. Let's see if we can get an explanation here as the official's coming over. So .5 seconds on the clock as you... May have heard the official say there, and a chance for a heave after they got that timeout in, like you mentioned, Daniel. Exactly right, and this is the bare minimum amount of time that you can catch and shoot. Right. More than likely, you're looking at something going towards the rim. Again, a, a, a tough spot, and now Brewster going to do something similar to what you said, Absolutely. potentially to get the ball in. Now, to make this even tougher, you're going to put the seven foot two Daniel Jacobson on the basketball, make things tougher now for Shane Lincoln to throw this ball in. Again, you're thinking the ball has to go to Bryson Tucker, and they put some length on him. They go back to Wilkins guarding Bryson Tucker now. Lincoln looking to get it in. It's literally a Hail Mary for Bishop O'Connell. Tucker turns, gets it off, the shot is up, it's no good. Off back iron. Tucker, who hit so many big shots in this game for Bishop O'Connell, comes up just short, and it is Brewster that hangs on to win this game, 59-58. to Well, Daniel Woods, we saw a little bit of everything and a really exciting contest, and uh, a little bit later than we thought, it is Brewster that hangs on and gets the victory. It is, and it's just a gutty effort from Brewster in this game. You didn't have your best offense. You didn't have the best